Hello everybody and welcome to this video looking at UK politics emerging and minor UK political parties. This is part of my uh, A-level politics uh, playlist and my aim is to work my way through the entire A-level spec. So make sure you subscribe, get notifications and support me doing that and hopefully you'll have a whole range of videos that will help you with your A-level politics. Right, so what do you need to know? Well, we're told on the spec that you need to know uh, the importance of other parties in the UK. So this is other parties from the major three, the Labour Party, the Conservative Party and the Liberal Democrats. And you need to know the ideas and policies of two of the minor parties. And hopefully this video is going to give you all of that. So the importance of other parties in the UK. Well, for over 100 years, UK politics has, has been dominated by two parties, the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. The only real challenge to them has come from the, the Liberals, which started off as the Liberal Party and then became um, the Alliance and then became the Liberal Democrats. And so that party through time has challenged at various points. But the real dominance has been there from the Labour and the Conservative Party. This has been challenged, however, uh, to, to quite a strong degree more recently. There has emerged uh, issue parties, so parties such as the Green Party, UKIP and the Brexit Party, which campaign on very particular areas uh, of policy and can attract uh, large numbers of voters. Also, we've seen the emergence of the nationalist parties. Now, those nationalist parties have existed and been around for a long time. But since the devolution brought about by uh, Blair's government and, then, and continued since, the Scottish National Party in particular, but also Plaid Cymru, have emerged and become a much stronger influence on UK politics. There's also the parties uh, of Northern Ireland, and they've become uh, more significant. Um, in particular, uh, the DUP, because it, it propped up uh, the Tory government 2017 to 2019, and also Sinn Féin, and, and they, they have quite a significant impact on uh, the uh, arithmetic of Parliament because they don't take their seats. Uh, and these parties are the more um, the more radical of the, the parties uh, within Northern Ireland, and, and whilst the older parties, like the Ulster Unionists, tend to be quite strongly um, uh, aligned with the Conservatives and the, and the SDLP seem to be uh, quite strongly aligned towards the Labour Party. With both those gone, uh, or, or not not gaining seats in in Parliament in the same way, and the DUP and Sinn Féin being there, that that has changed issues in Parliament to a degree. So the impact of minor parties at elections. Well, hi historically, almost all votes in elections go to the Labour or the Conservative Party, and I've, I've come up with some. Uh, historical uh, examples of this. I mean, the most extreme one I could find was 1951, where almost 97% of all votes went to either the Labour Party or the Conservative Party. If you go forward to 1970, just under 90% of votes either went to the Labour Party or the Conservative Party. But we do see this period in, in the fairly recent past of, of a really significant drop in this. So in 2005, uh, the, 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 the Labour and Conservative vote combined was 67.6%. Uh, in 2010, it was 65.1%. In 2015, it was 67.3%. And at this point, political scientists look at it and go, well, it looks like the UK is becoming a multi-party system where there are many power parties uh, competing uh, for power, for competing for seats, and this old dominance of the, old, the the major two parties seems to have gone into a fairly significant decline, and that's one of the reasons why the Liberal Democrats moved out of what it would have been looked at many years ago as one of the minor parties and moved into this idea, and it's been placed there with the Labour and Conservatives in the major party section, because they started to take quite large chunks of the vote. Now, 2017 saw a swing back towards two party dominance. We saw a real more, more of a traditional shootout between the Labour and the Conservatives, and they picked up a combined 82.4% of the vote. But this dropped back again in 2019 to uh, under 76%. Um, and the, the Conservative vote between 2017 and 2019 was almost unchanged. What happened in 2019 was the Labour Party vote collapsed, and a lot of that went um, to different parties instead. So this would suggest that there is there is an indication and what's unclear going forward is whether 
2019, we're going to start after 2019, we're moving back to that period of 2005 to 2015, where the, the, the minor parties start to have a big impact in elections, or whether we're going to swing back to, again to two party dominance. It'd be interesting to see where we are at the next election. So if we look at the impact of these minor parties in the election, the, the, there is a, a real division um, between them because traditionally um, the minor parties, again, if you can maybe also you could include the Liberal Democrats in this, but also uh, the parties like the Greens and UKIP are really badly affected by the first past the post system because they, they pick up votes, but they tend to be dispersed across the whole country, not concentrated in certain areas. And so they might get a decent number of votes and they might come second in a load of um, constituencies, not actually win seats. However, some of the minor parties have been really buoyed by the, the first past the post system. Uh, and this has been particularly true for the Scottish National Party, who obviously have a very geographically concentrated vote. Uh, and this means that they've been able to win significant numbers of seats. Now, bear in mind, there are 59 seats in Scotland. You can see that in 2015, the SNP won 56 of those 59 seats. They, they received 1.45 million votes. Now, the anomaly of the system can really be highlighted in this election because the Liberal Democrats won eight seats. So that's 48 less seats than um, the SNP, but they gained a million more votes. They got 2.42 million votes. Uh, the Greens won one seat with 1.11 million votes and the UK, UKIP, and this really is it, it, it's something that illustrates the difficulty that minor parties face when it comes to elections. UKIP won one seat with 3.88 million votes. So they received getting on, well, between two and three times the number of votes uh, of, of the SNP, but won one seat compared to 56. In, 15, in, in 2019, we, we see um, a similar repeat. The SNP 48 seats slightly drop in, in votes compared to 2015, 1.24 million votes. Uh, the Liberal Democrats um, won 11 seats, but to get those 11 seats, they, they won 3.7 million votes. The Greens got one seat with 0.86 million votes. The Brexit Party didn't get any seats and they, they received 0.64 million votes. So actually, the, the, the importance of uh, the minor parties might not necessarily transfer into seats. It does in some examples like the SNP, where the electoral system really suits them, but not in the case of others, such as, uh, as, as the Green Party and UKIP. Uh, and again, one of our major parties as well, the Liberal Democrats, who, who their their votes are not reflected in seats, but their votes can still have an impact on what happens in the election and they can still end up holding a um, balance of power. Now, there is also a, a significant kind of policy impact. So as we've seen, UKIP picked up large numbers of votes, but they didn't win seats. But they have had a profound impact on UK politics uh, with the Brexit referendum that takes part in 2016. And we see a shift in conservative in that policy area and in others, actually, to, to match some of the ideas uh, put forward by UKIP, in particular, uh, the, the uh, desire to leave uh, the European Union. The Green Party, equally, has not had huge electoral success, has won a seat and has, has maintained that seat. Um, but their existence and the votes that they pick up has helped push the other major parties towards considering a, a green agenda and to focus on green issues at, at elections in fear of losing votes and, and seats potentially to the Green Party. So both UKIP and the Green Party have had an impact on the agenda in UK politics. They've also had a lot more success in other elections, notably local and European elections where the, the voting systems are different, the turnouts are lower and people are more likely to protest against whichever one of the major parties they normally vote for by voting for somebody else. So in these areas, the Greens have had impacts on councils. Uh, UKIP in particular have had a significant impact in holding a, a significant number of seats in the European Parliament. And again, changing uh, the UK's relationship with the EU. The Scottish National Party then. So the Scottish National Party um, have really benefited from devolution. 
So Labour, under Blair, believed that granting devolution to Scotland would ensure their dominance of Scottish policy. Uh, politics and in the short term it seemed to work okay but in the long term they were wrong it, it has not helped Labour in Scotland uh, in 2007 Alex Salmon led the SNP to a minority government in Scottish Parliament uh, and that became a majority government in 2011 uh, and this success of, of the SNP in, Sco in uh, Scottish elections then led to the independence referendum in 2014 now, although Scotland voted against independence, uh, the, the vote was closer than a lot of people initially expected it to be. And the SNP then went from strength to strength. And in, in 2015, they won 56 out of the 59 seats uh, and have remained uh, the biggest party in Scotland in terms of general elections ever since. Now, devolution has gone, been taken further in the acknowledgement of SNP success. Uh, and there's also been the um, English votes for English laws brought in in Westminster, which has restricted uh, the power of Scottish um, MPs to vote on certain issues, but hasn't stopped them, for example, giving Cameron a bloody nose over uh, Sunday opening times because they felt it was something that would affect the whole of the UK, even though it was only going to be brought in in England and Wales. Um, and again, it helps make the SNP's point about uh, in the need for independence if the, the power of Scottish MPs is, as it ha as attempts have been made, restricted within Westminster. Nicola Sturgeon has emerged as a key figure in UK politics, gains a lot of press uh, attend attention, and as someone who has um, highlighted a very different approach, for example, during um, the COVID-19 crisis, and has shown a strong difference in view uh, with the UK government, and particularly the conserv uh, with the Conservatives, uh, such as Johnson, when it's come to Brexit. So SNP policies, well, their, their primary goal was independence for Scotland. Um, they also strongly, oppo uh, strongly opposed uh, Brexit, pointing out that Scottish voters had, had voted to remain. Uh, they are generally a left of centre party uh, in supporting increased health spending. Uh, 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 Nicola Sturgeon has been a very outspoken critic of austerity, has been brought in by the Conservative government. Uh, Scotland is different to England and Wales in, in, in offering free university places to, to its Scottish students. Uh, the SNP calls for the scrapping of the Trident nuclear weapons programme. Uh, and different to, for example, the Conservatives in the UK, they want to promote greater immigration because of the particular economic circumstances and the ageing population in Scotland uh, and the levels of population in Scotland. They've also been involved in, uh, very controversially this very week, um, changes to the uh, the granting of exam grades during the COVID crisis where they uh, listened to protests and um, went with teachers' recommendations rather than the statistical model that had been uh, picked up. And we have seen all the way through the COVID crisis really clear, clear differences and a very clear voice from the SNP about how things should be done differently to the way that the government in Westminster under Boris Johnson is doing things. Right, the Green Party. Now, much less electoral success. Um, Caroline Lucas became the first Green MP in 2010 for Brighton Pavilion. And, and that is the, the, the seat since the, the Green Party have continued to win, but it hasn't spread elsewhere. The best performance in the general election was in 2015 when they got over a million votes, but again, still only one seat. Their main policy area is the environment, and they're pushing for net zero emissions by 2030, phasing out of fossil fuel and nuclear power. Uh, they call for a very radical overhaul of um, uh, transport, including nationalisation of railways, and they oppose fracking. Now, so as you would expect, environmental policy is absolutely front and centre uh, and would require, if the Greens to, were to take government, some really radical changes to the way that uh, our economy and lifestyle um, operate. Now they also focus on social justice, uh, they called for the ending of tuition fees, they call for the creation of a, a national uh, living wage, opposed, uh, which would be much higher than a minimum wage. Uh, they promote a minority group, uh, group uh, rights, uh, for example, uh, LGBTQ plus rights. Uh, and they are actually really quite a radically left wing group on, on uh, a number of issues. I mean, economically, we look at things like they call for a four day week. They call uh, they, they call for the introduction of a basic income for all, all adults. 
Um, they are very strongly uh, pro-EU. Uh, they, they are very, very liberal in policies on other areas, notably, for example, on drugs policy. Now, some of these policies have had an impact. Now, no other party is, is going as far as the Green Party would do in terms of the environment, but parties that the progressive parties, parties on the left, such as the Labour Party uh, and parties in the centre, the Liberal, Party, the, the Liberal Democrats, do in particular see the need to, um, to, to guard against losing votes to the Greens by also pushing uh, green policies. And then we've also seen this uh, with the Conservative Party and Boris Johnson quite um, frequently uh, talking about green issues, though policy has not been anywhere near uh, the, the extreme, uh, more extreme version that the Green Party offer. Right, I hope that's um, given everything, given you plenty of um, food for thought and, and given you what you need in terms of addressing the, those key elements of the spec. So you should now have an, an idea of the impact of minor parties on UK politics and also some details about two of the minor parties, which I've done in a bit more detail, uh, the SNP and the Green Party. Please, um, if you have done, if you've liked this video, please uh, click on the like button. If you've got any comments uh, or any questions, please uh, leave those in the comments section. And if you want more on A-level politics, then please subscribe to the channel. Support me in my aim to uh, produce videos on all the different aspects and to get notifications as more videos are added. Thank you very much for watching.